In this video, I'm gonna show you how I harmonize the trumpet section by doing it. I got great response from my previous video where I harmonized eight bars of a saxophone solely. And um, one of you guys, one of my viewers, wrote me and asked why I didn't record with a real saxophone section at the end. And the honest answer is, it's difficult. They, they, those earlier videos that I had where I used real performers at the end, I recorded in 2020 when none of the, or 2021, when none of my musicians that I work with <laughs> were working <laughs> for obvious world reasons. Now everyone's really busy and it takes a lot of time to get things back and people don't really want to do this stuff out of the goodness of their heart because they're so gosh darn busy. So. Uh, on that note, I decided this week I'd do a trumpet section specifically so that I can record it at the end. So at the very end of this tutorial, you'll hear what we just harmonized in real time. Then you'll hear me playing it back for you so you can hear what it sounds like with real trumpets. Uh, before I get into it, first, I teach private lessons over Zoom. Anywhere in the world, I'm happy to teach lessons. There's an email in the description. After the previous video where I mentioned as an aside that I teach lessons, I got a lot of people emailing me asking for lessons. I have, <laughs> I'm busy, but there's, I have extra time to teach lessons and I love to do it. So if you're, if you're, if you're thinking about taking arranging lessons, shoot me an email. Um, also, don't forget to hit subscribe, smash the like button. I hear that's important for some reason. Um, and definitely go check out my Patreon. Your support goes a long way towards helping me continue to make these videos. So we're in Sibelius now. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're actually harmonizing. And this is the melody of a jazz standard. So you'll recognize it, or you can just look at the top of the screen. All right, here we go. All right, I put the E flat minor at the at the very end just because we're gonna need that to harmonize the end of four. That's really the chord change from the next bar. This is something that you're probably going to end up doing at some point, which is arranging a standard. And part of what you're gonna end up doing is harmonizing the trumpet section. Now, <laughs> word of warning, one of my rules when I'm do arranging for big band is I just about never harmonize the trumpet section without support. So either the saxophones or the trombones or some combination down below supporting that harmony. And the same reason why you don't play, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're playing piano, you don't typically play a uh, four note harmony in your right hand, you know, up high on the keyboard. It sounds super, super thin. Uh, it, the trumpets have the same problem. So when this is done being harmonized, it's going to sound thinner than a typical big band orchestration, I probably would copy this voicing down an octave in the trombones if I was going to do this for a big band. So when we talked about saxophone sections, we had all kinds of orchestration techniques that we have at our disposal. We can do closed voicing where the melody is doubled in the berry sax, or we can do drop two that puts the doubled melody in tenor sax two and has berry sax on a harmony below that, or drop two, drop four, which is even more spread, or using a drop two with roots on the bottom. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with a saxophone section, likely because there are three different instruments in a saxophone section. You have alto sax, tenor sax, and berry sax, which all sound different in different ranges. Um, so they can support a really spread voicing. Trumpet, on the other hand, um, has very specific characters in each of its registers. And so if you have trumpet one way above the staff, if we do a, sp a spread voicing, we'll end up with trumpet four, you know, a 14th below trumpet one, like more than an octave, an octave and a sixth or something. Trumpet four will be in the low register and there will be no way they can support trumpet one. For that reason, there are way fewer options when harmonizing the trumpet section. I generally use <laughs> three different, I guess there are four choices. So we'll use closed voicing with no doubled octave most of the time. Okay, um, and that's what we're going to do, in fact, the entire thing. We're gonna, we're gonna harmonize this entire thing that way. But we can also do um, unison, octave unison, <laughs> which is basically the same thing, but in two different octaves. Uh, we could do uh, voicing in two part, which I also do rarely, but is a great sound. Um, or when the lead trumpet goes 
significantly above the staff, you know, or just above the staff at all, uh, I like to use triadic voicing that doubles the first trumpet down an octave in trumpet four. That said, let's jump into this, and we're going to close voice this entire thing. That's how I would start, by the way, if I were doing um, something with drop twos for saxophones, for instance. I usually start with the closed voicing and then modify it from there. I had someone uh, leave in the comments last time a uh, question, why don't I do this all on one staff and then use the explode function, which is a great, a great way for some people to do it. If, in fact, if you're writing in uh, Sibelius or Finale using a, a MIDI controller keyboard um, and you're proficient at piano, that could be the easiest way. You just you know, chunk out four note voices for each of these uh, spots and then hit explode. For me, I'm not a super proficient pianist and I, my brain works in this way. I like to see the parts as I'm writing them on separate staves. This is, I've been doing it a long way and a long time and I'm the fastest this way, so this is, this is what I prefer. But um, there's certainly no, nothing wrong with doing it another way. We have the fifth on top, so, and it's a, a C minor seven chord. So we'll go uh, E flat. We can't include the 11th, which I usually like to include because it's too close to the melody. Um, so we'll make it a nine, uh, and B flat. This F is the 11th, but we're gonna skip it and treat it as an encore tone. We have the third on top. We'll put uh, the root there, then a B flat, then a G. All right. Then we've got the ninth on top. Great, so we got to do a B flat, a G, and then an E flat. By the way, at this point, I've harmonized a lot of this as a minor nine. So I'm just gonna change this to a minor nine. Okay, so then I've got uh, the root in the melody. So we can't include the seventh, so we're gonna skip it. But that's okay, because we've already made it a minor nine, which is a five note chord. So we have three other notes, we'll be just fine. Um, we have this B flat. Um, so we'll go G, E, D. Now you might notice that there are some repeated notes <laughs> right here when the melody is moving. Now this, because these are both long notes, it's not going to be a problem. Um, we really don't want repeated notes on these eighth notes right here uh, because it'll make the inner parts awkward to play, but um, that's not really a problem at the end of the second bar. Okay, so now we're on F minor seven and we've got a third on top. So we'll put a root, uh, then a seventh, and then a fifth. Great. You notice our key signature. We have a B flat, E flat, A flat. So the A flat's in the key signature. So we're good. We've got a G in the melody. So this is going to be at least a momentary minor nine. It's going E flat, C, A flat. Really good. Then you know, we've got an F, so we can't have an E flat. So we'll go C, A flat, and G, because we've already, we already used minor nine earlier in the bar, so why not use it again? All right, let's see what these four bars sound like uh, with playback. Great, I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed this weird note <laughs> that wasn't, uh, <laughs> we didn't harmonize this pitch yet. Um, so let's do that. All right, we can make this a momentary G7, or G minor seven even, because um, that's the five in the key of C minor. Let's try it. So we've got an F, we'll do a D, a B natural. We can't really do a G because uh, it'll be a repeated tone, so we'll do A flat. So it's like a, a G7 fl flat nine. Let's see, what, let's see how that sounds. Sounds great. Um, just for my own uh, curiosity, what if we do a um, diminished passing chord? So we have F, minor third down is D, <laughs> minor third down from that is B, minor third down from that is G sharp or A flat. So we've already done <laughs> a diminished passing chord. In this case, was the same notes as our um, G7 flat nine. So it works for two different reasons. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Let's hear it again. All right, here we go. Yeah, just for curiosity, what if we do this as a uh, F minor 11 instead of an F minor 9? I usually don't like to use both the 11th and the 9th, especially when I'm doing four notes in my voicing, 
because then the extensions make up half the chord and sometimes it doesn't sound like the chord it's supposed to be. But I can sort of choose between the ninth and the 11th. And in this case, either one would work. So what would end up happening is we'd have the A flat here and we'd have the B flat, which is the 11th in trumpet two. Um, let's see if that sounds better or worse. Here we go. Ah, it sounds equal. I think I'm gonna stick with the minor nine. And the reason for that is it's just kind of elegant in my mind, at least, um, to use the minor ninth because we're forced to because of this part of the melody up here. Um, we have to use the minor ninth at least for that hit, um, and we might as well use it in the next voicing as well. Okay, moving on. D minor seven flat five. So we're going, I'm just gonna copy this whole thing down into each part. All right, so we've got an F on top, so we'll go D, C, A flat, good. This E flat is a non-chord tone, so we'll skip it. We have a D, so we'll go A flat, F, E natural. So we'll, we'll do that as a uh, minor nine flat five. Uh, we've got C, A flat, F, E natural. All right, look at that, that's gross. Okay, we've got a, um, Yeah, that should be a that should, this needs to be a B natural. How many of you are screaming at your screen, <laughs> going <laughs> that, that I did the playback for the melody and it didn't bother me, but it, it obviously can't be a B flat because it's a G seven flat nine and this is the third. So um, we're gonna go with 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 the actual melody note here because that's uh that's how cool we are. So we'll do A flat and notice these look like a second, but they're really a minor third apart. Um, so that's fine. We have an F, then a D. Great. Oh, this F is getting a little bit low, but you know, let's uh, let's be okay with that. <laughs> D, B natural, A flat. Now this is just going to be a B flat below the staff when we transpose, which is low for trumpet, but I think it will be fine in this case. Okay, this A flat, we're gonna treat as a passing tone going to this C minor, so, cause it's a half step above. So we'll have G, E flat, D, B flat, and we'll call this one a minor nine. Um, and we'll go back and do this one that's half step above, so this should be an E natural, E flat, do that as a C flat again because when we transpose it, it'll show up as a D flat, which is what we want. So C flat it is. Okay. Nope. Oh, and this part's going to be a minor eleven. Um, yeah. What if we do this just as a, a minor seven, so that when we get to the other half of the bar, the minor eleven makes sense. So let's do that. So we've got an F. We have to skip the third in this case, but that's okay. Um, so we'll have the root, then the seventh, and the fifth. Trust me that it's okay to skip the third when you've got the eleventh on top. Uh, just, just kind of is what it is. Um, e flat, then C, then B flat, then G. Uh, actually, we could skip the root here and do B flat, then G, and then F. Kind of like that better because at least we have everyone's in motion that way. Um, we've got a C, gotta skip the seventh, so we'll go G, F, E flat, good. Then we'll just copy the same voicing. You notice we have an E flat and then an E flat on top, it's the same chord, so we'll use the same voicing for that. Good. Then we've got an F on top, we should use the same voicing that we used over here, so we we'll use C, then B flat, then G. Wonderful. Then the and of four is really going to be the chord in the next bar, but I have it down here. It's an E flat minor seven. Uh, with a G on top? That can't be right. <laughs> it's got, I guess it's got to be, uh, look at that. So that's going to have to be a G flat also. I'm, I really am striking out on some of these, um, but that's okay. So we'll do E flat below that, then B flat. And then G flat? No. 
Oh, then A flat. Good, it's a minor 11. We'll do it as a minor 11. All right, let's see how the second phrase sounds. Oh, before I even play it, I can see we didn't do this chord. <laughs> um, that's an E flat going down to a D, so we can do that as a half, and like notice that motion is a half step. So the, what I like to do, oh, before we even deal with that, we have to deal with this. What's going on here? Okay, D to, to, to C, which is the root to the seventh of this chord, the D minor seven flat five, and so, when you have that kind of emotion, you, when, you, when you have the root on top, you end up skipping the seventh and then voicing down below that because you need at least a minor third between the lead voice and the next voice down. But <laughs> when the melody immediately goes to the seventh, you end up with the same voicing underneath. And so you have a bunch of repeated notes. So in this case, I think that this eighth note, sorry, the C is the important one because it's right before a rest. That's gonna ring a little bit longer than the previous note. So we're gonna harmonize this D as an on-chord tone. So let's do it as a diminished passing chord. Uh, so we've got D, we're gonna have B natural below it, then A flat below that, and then F below that. And let's uh, spread these out. Boop, all right, good. Then, um, we're gonna do this E flat as a passing chord, going down to that D. So we'll go C down to B, A natural down to A flat, G flat down to F. All right, now let's see how the second phrase sounds. Yeah. Hmm, I, I'm okay with that, let's do the whole thing again. So now I'm gonna go get on my trumpet, set up the, the thing. I'm gonna record all of these parts directly into Logic and give it a quick mix down and then I'll see you back here in a minute. <laughs> okay, let's see how this sounds. Uh, sounds pretty good to me. So that is how I would harmonize a trumpet section. Uh, definitely hit, hit me up with comments uh, below. Let me know what you think about some of the choices I made harmonically. If you have any questions about why I made that choice, or if you have any ideas for future videos, please let me know. And again, if you're thinking about taking arranging lessons, feel free to shoot me an email. Again, my email is in the description. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>